Present yourself. Hi, my name is Glenda. I'm a participant at the Climate Forum, the People's Summit. And we've been working on the declaration for months now. And in the last three days, many, many groups have contributed. In fact, almost 90% uh, of the people attending here from the South um, have been contributing to the declaration. And finally, through a very difficult but very productive process, the declaration was accepted yesterday, went onto the website page last night at 8 o'clock, and everybody, all organizations, all individuals, all networks are encouraged to sign the declaration. It will support our approach to the G77 group, um, who have just walked out of the um, legal proceedings down at COP15, and we hope that we can catch them while they're mad so that they can accept our declaration as the people's way to move forward. What does the declaration say, state? Oh, the declaration states many things. Um, we're certainly looking at all the issues. The summary is a very concise form of everything that we want to include. Some of the things we're talking about is um, more democratically um, accessible governments. We're talking about good governance. We're talking about uh, militarization and war. We're talking about the chance national corporations who govern our world today and we're talking about the United Nations being included in the negotiations uh, for the climate change. We're calling for systems change rather than climate change. Are you looking also for specific cuts in emissions for money and technology transfer or is that out of your area? Yes, certainly um, it's been touted that um, the North uh, would like to make uh, 10 billion available to the South to deal with um, the so-called emissions or the reductions of emissions. We're saying that doesn't touch the tip of the iceberg in terms of not only what it cost in present day time, but for the criminal debts that have been incurred by the North towards the South as a result of the exploitation of resources, and not only resources, but our main resources are human resources. A survey yesterday showed that Swedish and the US citizens would be willing to pay almost 3% of gross national product to help mitigate climate change in developing countries. If all countries spent 3% on this, would that be enough? We don't know how to quantify it very specifically. That's not my area of expertise. I'm thinking that it's a good start. However, if I remember what the Bolivian negotiator was telling us yesterday, she said that they're starting off at 49%. And so if we compare what people are looking to quantify the so-called debt with, if we're looking at the past and we're looking at the present and we're looking at the future, I would say 3% is much too little. Much too low. Much too low for the trillions that have left our countries, not only in um, resources and um, wealth, but what they've left behind in terms of toxic waste that have eradicated yeah, the, the possibility that we have a clean, healthy Mother Earth. If you do not get hold of the G77 countries, or if you cannot agree with them, will you send this declaration to the uh, UNFCC uh, negotiator, Eva de Boer? Um, that is the intention, um, that the declaration be taken across to the COP15, um, and we are looking at um, who to hand it over to very specifically, and so we've been having meetings and we'll be very clear about what the process would be, and we'll be very clear that we want accountable um, um, instruments in place so that we can keep them accountable for the document and we can go back, whether it be in five months or five years or 50 years, to say, what have you done? Um, for example, um, I have been involved with the Durban Declaration, and um, almost nine years later, um, some trickle of countries have in fact participated in the Durban Review, and so this Copenhagen Review um, is also going to be absolutely necessary. Which country do you come from? I'm South African by birth. How is South Africa being affected by climate change? Uh, major, major. South Africa in fact is the darling of the negotiating table. South Africa has committed and pledged to reduce the emissions by 35%. Uh, I may be wrong, 35 to 34 percent, which means that um, they consider themselves um, a part of the developed countries, but they're also very much a part of the developing countries. And so um, they would have to look very closely. In fact, they'll have to scrutinize what the transnational organizations or corporations are doing in our country. But South Africa is also leading in the field of transnational corporations. In fact, we're perpetrators of the trans corporate nationals.
And are you satisfied with the South African government's um, actions? Well, at, at this point in time, I think our South African government is doing a lot, and we allude to, to, to that, and we congratulate them for, for all the hard work that they're doing. I think that because they fairly um, uh, influential on the continent of Africa, much more can be done, and we're hoping that they will do much more in the future. Our other African countries, are they also uh, doing well? I certainly think that there are a number of other African countries who sit in the African Union who certainly are talking about it, who are making strides towards that. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you very specifically what those uh, strides are, but certainly they are moving towards um, saying no to the North. But it's very difficult, and if you consider the influential um, grouping of people like the Paris um, elite group um, and the divorce people, that's where all the negotiations go on behind um, closed doors. Okay, thank you much indeed. Pleasure. Michael Lillian reporting for the Copenhagen Voice.